Hello, everyone. I am Holly Fogel. Hey, I'm Lori Hamilton. And we are, we are coaches on call. Uh, we are continuing our seven part series, um, seven characteristics of agents that could be in danger of being left behind as our market shifts. Um, so we are on characteristic number four. So today we are going to take a couple of minutes and talk to you about the passive agent. Oh yeah. So, yeah. The passive. So just to kind of recap, we've already been through the uninformed agent, the secret agent and the negative agent. So today it's all about being passive and in our training and in our coaching and in a lot of the courses that I teach, um, a big concept is around this. And what we, you know, really talk about is the spontaneous and reactive agent versus the proactive and intentional. Mm -hmm. So passive, you know, in a way is not even being spontaneous and reactive. It's, it's, it's really kind of um, not taking any action, <clears throat> but we want people to really think about their business and have a plan. So it's really the P and I mindset is what we talk about all the time. And that's just short. We have a lot of letters that we have shortened and stuff. So the P and I mindset is just being super proactive and intentional. And you're going to have to get into this mindset. I know a lot happened to agents the last couple of years and things appeared out of nowhere. And there was, you know, a lot of uh, frenzy, um, in the market and that has all died down. And a lot of it has to do with affordability and interest rates and um, several other uh, things. So Brian Buffini just, you know, just dropped his bold predictions yesterday uh, or Monday. And if you have not watched it, I encourage you to look that up, get registered. There's a lot of great resources in there and a lot of interesting facts about what 2023 is going to look like. Um, the good news is they really envision this being about a three quarter, you know, kind of lull. So if you, you know, were smart the last couple of years and saved up some good uh, income from what you what you made, saved it um, and really stay true to being um, proactive and intentional in 2023, you're going to probably be fine. So I did feel really encouraged after watching his bold predictions. And a lot of it makes a lot of sense. So I did want to just encourage you all to kind of find that, um, download the resources, study those numbers and have intelligent conversations. It goes back to being informed and knowledgeable and coming to your database and your sphere um, from a sense of knowledge, not from feelings. So that will also arm you with some great information. So I did want to just tell you that um, but why don't you kind of kick us off into your mindset, Lori, when you think about the proactive and intentional um, ways that you help, you know, a lot, you work with a lot of new agents. I tend to work with yeah. a lot more experienced agents. So why don't you kind of give us a little peek behind how you get folks to really be proactive and intentional? Yeah, because, you know, this is different, different from like what we talked about, the secret agent. I think, you know, when you're looking at being proactive and intentional, you really have to have some kind of blueprint because, you know, we all know if we've been in the business, real estate can be a roller coaster. So we need some kind of blueprint or business plan. So it kind of all starts with the business plan mm -hmm. and, you know, you're, you're trying to plan out your business and your goals. And basically it comes down to your lead generation channels. That's really where I kind of have to focus it. Yes, we we do start with a business plan that takes you like, what do you want it to look like in six months all the way up to five years? And it's a, if you've never done that, if you've never done a business plan or gone through that exercise, I I, I highly recommend it. Um, and we have we have a couple of different business plans that we take all of our agents through. But you know. What I really love pulling out of the business plan is yes, it's your blueprint and it's it's your foundation. But where the rubber meets the road and the meat of it for me when working with agents is what are your lead generation channels? And then those of you are like, what are lead generation channels? Okay, how are you finding buyers and sellers? Like, you know, we all can go to all of that. Like, you know, we can all rattle off, especially the, uh, us that's been in the business, the fundamental ways, right? Like open houses, your sphere of influence, expireds for sale by owners. Um, what else am I missing? Um, but, you, you know, yeah, networking, you know, Social. you've got those 
pillars. So it's like, okay, where, where am I going to actually get really specific and where, what pond am I going to fish in? Well, I want to have, I always tell people four. You, you need to have four ponds that you're going to fish in. Okay. Cause you can find buyers and sellers by doing open houses. You can find buyers and sellers by farming. I almost forgot that. That's what I didn't. That was my favorite thing to do. Honestly, when I was actively selling was farming, you can do farming. Um, if it's social media, yes, you can definitely find buyers and sellers there. And then your sphere of influence. Um, I'm just choosing four that maybe I would pick, right? Mm -hmm. Um, finding buyers and sellers in all of those four pillars, that's where you're going to get your business. So then what are the activities? That's where I think really that's the true, that's the creative part. To me, that's the fun part coming up with ideas on what are those activities. And they're not all set in stone. I think there's lots of basic activities that we all should be doing, but um, you've really got to get specific and put some thought into it and get with somebody. Um, on to, to help guide you if, if if you're really not sure what activities you should be doing like what, what was it last week we did that one where we did the brain trust or the brain dump and we just came up with all the different ideas and it was so fun because it was like don't talk yourself out of ideas let's just go ahead and just name some things to do um to find buy buyers and sellers while doing open houses you know, we took, yeah. we took four different ones. I think that think tank yielded between 25 and 40 activities on the four pillars that we chose to focus in on. So if you've never done this, what we call think tank, brain, brain dump, however you want to do it. Um, the premise behind it is to put an idea at the top of a piece of paper. And then, so we started with work and buy referral because 95% of the agents that we all work with and coach that's usually one of their pillars is to work by referral. Um, you know, one of my favorite mm -hmm. courses to teach and a fan favorite is my, are you working by referral or waiting by referral? Okay. So, I love that class. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a fan favorite. People love that. Um, but really what I find is even when I start coaching folks, they can rattle off the ways they're going to get business. And then when I say, okay, what does that hour look like when you're working on your farm? It's kind of, People run out of things to do. So the whole concept behind it is to give you enough ideas to, to put down on paper. And then you can go through the evaluation process after you've let all the creativity flow. And we had several people on the Zoom call. So to get all that different input from folks, there was a lot of great ideas that came out of that, that even, you know, being a real estate 22 years and coaching for 12 there were things I hadn't even thought of. So it was so empowering and it was really fun. It's a great exercise to do. And you're absolutely right. You've got to be able to fill those hours, your lead generation hours, which we're going to talk about in the next, um, the next characteristic, but you've got to be able to fill those hours with actionable activities. And mm -hmm. I love, you know, I know we give credit to a lot of people and another one of my favorites is Jared James. And you know, he always talks about if you focus on the result, you're going to get frustrated. If you focus mm -hmm. on the activity, you're going to get results. So a lot yeah, of yeah. times I don't, I don't focus on people's, did you get to the closing or not? I focus on all the activities because I know that if you will actually do the activities, the closings take care of themselves. The business it takes is. care of itself. It but comes, it's to, that compound effect. You know, it's that effect and it doesn't happen. It's not, I make one phone call, I get an appointment. I mean, it doesn't, it just doesn't work that way. So I think people's expectations are also skewed in this business. And that's what I love about our business plan. We actually give you the tangible numbers that these numbers are proven. So if someone comes to me and says, my goal is $283,000 this year, I can back that down into exactly how many contacts per week you need to make. And yep. I know that you talk about this a lot, Lori. So why don't you kind of elaborate on what is a contact and, um, you know, how are they going to be able to track these numbers and, and kind of that little, that little portion of our business planning is probably worth millions. Like, I right mean, there, that yeah. And we, and we did that early. We, we did that in October, right? Because that's quote real estate new year for all of us realtors. Yes. Right. So I think we did that in October. Um, and I remember even talking to an agent like a week later and she was like, I got so much out of it. Um, so all great things about 
about our, our little class as a course, but here's the, here's the deal where it comes down to is like you said, somebody that wants $283,000, what exactly is their number? Is it eight? Is it 15 contacts a day? So what does that actually mean? Okay. So a contact is considered any of the five any of the five activities, okay? It is having a voice-to-voice -voice conversation about real estate. You can have that over the phone, okay? And you actually have to get somebody live. It's not making 50 dials and then you're like, well, I made 50 contacts. No, no, no. You made 50 dials. How many people did you talk to about real estate that day? Okay, so there's the voice-to-voice. -voice. Then there's the face-to-face. -face. So are you getting out and maybe taking somebody from your sphere to lunch? And you're talking about real estate, you know, are you qualifying them and saying, you know, hey, do you have a go to person uh, for all your, you know, real estate strategies? Because, you know, I'd love to be that person for you. You know, that's talking about real estate. They're probably going to ask how the market is. You know, it's everybody loves to talk about real estate, people that are in real estate and people that are not in real estate. They love to know about it. So face to face meetings, in my opinion, are, are very that that is that is a great way to get your contact number met. Then, of course, handwritten notes. Maybe you're just having one of those days where you're like, you know what, I got to get five, eight contacts in. I'm going to I'm going to go through my sphere and it's time for some handwritten notes to folks. You know, Holly, you are the handwritten note queen and I've done your personal note challenge. And I was like, OK, let's see how this goes. I was no stranger to write and thank you notes. Been there, done that, done that a lot. But it is so interesting when you just start writing out handwritten notes to people and thinking of you or, Hey, enjoyed meeting you last week, anything that's going on in your life and in, 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 in interaction you've had with somebody and you follow it up with a personal note, the impact that has on that person, it makes their day. I mean, I can't tell you how many, when I did your personal note challenge and people would get the, uh, either a birthday card, anniversary card, whatever I was sending out to them, I'd get such Great text messages. Thank you so much. Like, I loved it. So don't underestimate the handwritten note, in my opinion. I'll tell you, selling real estate for thir 12, 13 years, personal notes and my monthly newsletter were the two biggest lead generators that I ever had. Yep. And just a little yep. side note plug, I am launching, I do one quarter a year of the personal note challenge. I think this is year four. Um and quarter one of 2023 will be my personal note challenge. And it's, I've knocked it down a little bit. It's going to be five notes a week, but I've added a couple twists and turns this year. So if anybody listens. Oh, that'll be interesting. Cause I'm doing that one. Yeah. So if I'd anybody do. listening wants to get in, you just need to private message me um, or email me your email address. I will be doing a lot more communication through email this year. Um, on the personal note challenge and it's super fun and people from all over the country get in this mm -hmm. in real estate not in real estate like it is a ball so yeah. um, just a little side note on that so sad note okay I love know. it um, okay so we did three we said uh, voice to voice face to face handwritten note um, email email is great hey you could even step it up a notch and do like a video email um, I had an agent we've had an agent in the office that started doing this and it was fun to watch him send me, Hey, what do you think about this? It was just little practice videos. And it was great to see what he was talking about to his people. So, um, you know, it does have to go two ways. So remember sending yes. out an email to 50 people that doesn't count. You have to have two way communication in all of these to be considered a contact. So the email Correct. needs to go both ways. And then what's the final way. And then, um, text message. And again, it's got to go both ways. And I, I do want to tell folks, like a lot of people are like, so if I have to, um, cause the whole concept is that over years and years of studying and different, um, conversion ratios and such, the typical number is 35 contacts should yield you a client that's right. ready to buy or sell either now or in, like within the next 30 days. And a lot of people think it's 35 contacts to the same person. Oh my God, I got to talk to that person 35 times before they're ready to do something. That's not how it works. So the way it works is you have 35 different contacts with all kinds of different people. And then all of a sudden you have a buyer or seller and you're like, well, that wasn't any of these 35 because that's not how it works. The way it works is that you are putting out in the universe 35 different conversations with all kinds of different people. And what happens is what you focus on, you get back in return. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's 
again, the compound effect that really hits. So sometimes if you start from ground zero today and you're like, okay, I'm going to track every contact, it might be 41. It might be. And then what happens is you never stop those contacts. So they keep building and building and building. You might talk to someone, and I see this with the people that work expireds all the time. They'll list a house from an expired that they talked to months ago. Oh, yeah. And then it comes back, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, God, where did that person come from? So please don't think that the 35 that you talk to are even going to be ever do business with you. It doesn't matter. People just underestimate how much you have to be in the mode of being a realtor. So you have all these different conversations and then all of a sudden you are, and when you track your own, you'll be able to see people that have been in business for a long time. That number typically comes down. What I've, what we've seen is between 24 and 28 contacts for people that have been in business because they're more at a proficient level. They, they have more confidence. They know what they're talking about. They kind of, they're in their routine. So that number comes down over time. Everybody yes. wants to forget the overtime portion. So if I can tell people, listen, if you can be committed to 35 contacts over time and you do the number of contacts you need by like 90, by day 90 to 120, because everything you do today affects your business in 90 days. But then once it goes, once you get the momentum going, it, it continues on and it shortens and shortens mm-hmm. and shortens. Most people never get there because they give up. They're not consistent. They consistency will change your life forever. That's why you need a coach or an accountability partner. We were going to talk about that. Yeah. Well, and one thing I was going to say, one thing I was going to say too. Well, no, 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 no. It's all good. No, sorry. I I got on. I'm supposed to be working on my rambling. (laughs) Oh, then wait a minute. That's my new year's resolution. I haven't. That's your new year's. Okay. We'll wait. (laughs) We'll wait like 15 more days for that one. Okay. Okay. Well, what I was going to say though, was, you know, you look at 30, five contacts or, you know, say you have to do that a week or whatever, because we say, okay, what is your contact per day? Um, I've worked with some agents that it's, it's six because that's whatever their goal is, their income goal, it based it on how many contacts and one agent was six a day. How do you get that in? Right. So, and actually we do this on a weekly basis. Here's how simple we can break it out to you. Okay. Say it's six contacts a day. What if it's nine? You could break it up super simple. You could do three handwritten notes. You could do three text messages and you can do three phone calls. Identify nine people each day that you're trying, that that you want to say your number is six or say your number is nine. Break that up and into those three categories. Those are still money-making activities. Notes, um, text messages, and calls. Those all fall under um those all fall under the con- what a contact is. So see how easily that can be broken up to be like, okay, I could actually easily hit six contacts a day or nine contacts a day. Yeah. And our, we Some have a thing we run, it's called 911 accountability. And uh, it's just that three notes, three calls, three messages. And then the one and one are, we have this cool wheel. We spin the wheel and we assign two random extra activities for the agents to do. And you can just do this yourself. You can get your own partner and do it. Just do it yourself. If agents started every day by getting 11 things done or nine things done or what, what a great start to the day. Then what happens is you start to get motivated and you start to get results and you start to get addicted to that, you know, Mm -hmm. and it becomes a habit. I find that most agents just don't have good habits. They have bad habits. They don't have any of the good habits. Make that a habit. Could you get three messages, three text messages, three uh, emails, three phone calls, three personal notes, three social media posts? I mean, you see how easy it is? Like we go through and tell you all the different ways, which we're not going to do, but there's lots of things. You need to get that plan. You need to get up every day, take control of yourself and get those things done. You cannot be passive. You will not survive in this business being passive, period. I mean, yeah. And I think if you caught yourself, maybe you were being passive. Maybe that's not how you typically operate, but then you, we all kind of can go through that kind of thing. And maybe you're like, well, maybe I have been a little bit passive. I need to get back on the horse again. Just get back on the horse again. Like start simple, start nine things. Like nine things, you know, it's just, if you're just more proactive and intentional in those ways, you will not be a passive agent. You will not have that characteristic. 
stick as a passive agent. Yeah. And, you know, we all drift. I mean, we're not perfect. I don't think, you know, I drift, I drift from my notes. I, you know, mm-hmm. that's why I started the personal note challenge. I was like, I got to get back on the horse. Look, I'm awful. And, and I love doing notes, but I still drifted like, and do, so there's, no, there's no shame in that. Um, we want to encourage you. That's what all this is about. We're trying to encourage you and inspire you. Um, mm-hmm. At the end of our seventh characteristic, we're going to give you like two of our best pieces of advice. So make sure you stay tuned um, and and follow through till we get to the end of these. And we really hope that they help you. And we're really looking for some feedback and success stories. You know, 2023, I'm going to be doing lots of interviews with agents across the country. Um, so I'm always looking for great, you know, stories of people to share, of inspiration, of things that they pushed through, people that you know, struggled or who, who's, who's made the most improvement in their business. So I would love to hear your story. You know, we would love to yep. hear your story. So I would too. Um, you know, just definitely consider that. So any more on the passive agent, Lori, or you think we're good? No, I think we're good. Like, you know, again, business plan, what are your lead generation channels? Those four pillars, you know, what are the activities? And then what's your number? How many contacts do you need to have a day? Like, let's just keep it simple there. You do kind of have to start big and then narrow it down, but the every day is going to be in the, in the small, uh, the small little steps. So, um, you know, we don't, we don't want you to be a passive agent. Yes. And if you're passive, you could be at risk and we don't want you, you to be, be at risk. risk. We yep. don't want you to Not be at, at all. risk. All right. Well, stay tuned. We will have characteristic number five out shortly. Yep. See y'all.